Hey there guys, DMO73 here, bringing you the first of our spoilers for the new Rhea Cluster structure decks. And it is everybody's favorite, Space Panda, who is really not a Space Panda. He just looks very cosmic and very cool. But that's because of his home crystal mechanic, which we'll talk about here in a second. So this is the light structure deck. Um, this will be um, all kind of packaged together. All the cards in this will come as four ups in the light structure deck, and we'll go from there. So uh, his name is Tagris Pearl Shine. He is adorable. Uh, he is a panda, judgment for three, energizes for white. At the beginning of the game, gain a gem of any attribute. So gems um, are kind of a new resource mechanic that will be usable by his archetype. And we're going to kind of see a little bit of that with spending and gaining and having a bunch of different ones is very, very helpful. Like if you can gain all the different colors, then you get some bonuses on some of the cards and stuff like that. And you'll see. And this new thing down here is... Very interesting idea. It is called a sealed item ability. So what's going to happen is a lot of J rulers are going to have these. Um, when the J ruler first gets released, um, this this text is just going to be doesn't not going to work. We're not going to know what that does. We're not going to know it, we can't be used anything like that. Um, and it's a little hard to understand for the article, but it seems like further down the line, those sealed items will be revealed, <clears throat> whether that be in the same set or in the next set or whatever. And then those sealed items. Uh, and abilities will become usable by those J rulers, J rulers. So I think this is a very interesting mechanic. Um, definitely want to see what these sealed abilities do. Um, but I think that it would be an excellent way to help bring... Uh, they've talked a lot about how these cards from the structure decks and the sets are going to be getting continuous support throughout the cluster. Uh, and this new sealed item ability is an interesting way to do that. So it says, okay, well, now that we know what the sealed ability is, this ruler might play differently. The power level might change greatly. So maybe you want to pick it up and try it again. It might bring it back into competitive play if it wasn't already there or if it had dropped off. That kind of stuff. So kind of to help um, bring relevance back to some rulers that may have been passed or bypassed in previous sets. So I think that's pretty cool. So we'll have to wait and see what comes out of it. Uh, next up, his flip side. So Tagris Pearl Shine, Lord of the Mountain. Good old Space Panda side. 8-8. Eight, eight, um, when this card enters the field, you gain two gems of any one attribute. And he can banish a light gem to give himself plus five, plus five. Uh, until the end of turn, or uh, he can banish a water gem to gain flying until the end of the turn. So that's also pretty interesting. So he can give himself flying or the power buff, which kind of helps make up for the fact that his basic stat line isn't that great. But also remember, this is a structure deck roller, so sometimes these are just a little bit weaker than what we see in the cluster. So now we have his stone, so ore from the treasure mountain. It is treated as a light magic stone, produces white, and when it enters the field, you gain a light gem. So naturally kind of helps build up that mechanic, so pretty cool. And then you'll get four of those in the structure deck, which is awesome. And then we have gem trader. Uh, so the other thing to note here is this is the first time the structure decks have had a special magic stone in them. So that's pretty cool that it's happening that way. Uh, so the gem traders are first resonator one drop three three you gain a light gem when it enters the field so just like that doop, you get to ramp up your gems a little bit there but just for light uh, then we have the white raven um who one drop three three flying so it's a bird with flying and you can banish a gem when it enters to draw a card so any colored gem maybe one you have an excess of like the light gems you could banish and just draw a card while getting this kind of one drop three three body i definitely see that being pretty good at least you know again for the early game structure deck stuff especially if your first turn is that special mag you know you get one to start you get one for hitting that special magic stone drop this guy on turn one go back down to having one one gem total and you go back and you get to draw a card so pretty good then we have Gem Craftsman, so it's a 3-drop 8-8 eight, eight, uh, human. When this card enters your field, you can gain any color gem, which is pretty cool. You can't grab Void Gems. Void Gems don't exist. It's just the five colors. Uh, and it gains plus two, plus two, as long as there are three or more different attributes among all gems you control. So again, have a wider variety of gems, she becomes better. Now we have Gem Blade Onyx, 2-drop 6-6, six, six, who if you control a Darkness Gem, gains Precision. And these are going to be kind of the next four cards is if they have a specific gem that kind of matches, they get a cool ability. Um, we have Gem Blade Sapphire, who's a 2-drop 6-6 six, six, that gets Flying. If you have a Water Gem, so that's pretty cool. Another Panda. We have a 3-drop 8-8 eight, eight, Ruby, Gem Blade Ruby. Gains Swiftness as long as you control a Fire Gem, so there's a bonus there. And then we have Diamond, the one-eyed treasury magician, the super rare of the structure deck. So four drop, 10, 10. Whenever you gain a gem, everything on your side of the field, resonator-wise, gets plus two, plus two. And you can pay two white to give something barrier. So 
that's pretty cool. Definitely like that a lot for the structure deck, giving white that protection feel. And he's a super, so he's got that kind of like bomb feel that's going to feel good when you're playing these structure deck games, maybe just getting started out. Next up, we have the spell stuff. So we have Jewel Burst. So it's a chance as an additional cost to play this card. Banish two gems, remove target resonator from the game. It's pretty high cost, but it's an instant removal. Like it's removal for any resonator. Um, so that can be pretty good in, in these early structure deck stuff. Then we have the Jewel Shield, one drop quick cast. Uh, target resonator gains plus two, plus two. Then you gain a gem of any attribute. Then that resonator gains an additional 100 for each defense for each attribute among all gems you control. So if you've diversified your gem base, that thing's gonna get more defense. The next card would be the Jewel Sword. So it's the exact same as Jewel Shield, just for attack. So it gains plus two, plus two. Then you gain a gem. Then you gain another attack bonus based on your diversity. So. If you're being smart about it and you know doing that kind of stuff you can get like, good value out of this so overall like the cards themselves are kind of weak but it is a structure deck um, but i definitely see how this could be a ton of fun to play and i'm really excited to see what this sealed item looks like um, what it turns out to be for him um, what that ability will do in the future but let me know what you guys think do you think the sealed item is a good way to try to help keep older rulers relevant do you think that it's silly what do you think about the panda, uh, <laughs> stone panda, and this new gem mechanic. I, for one, am definitely looking forward to goofing around with it, uh, having some fun with it. But let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and share out the video with all your Force of Wolf friends so they can stay up to date with the spoilers. And until next time, this is DMO73, signing off.